will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. New life is coming. We can count it in days now. God is breaking through. God's word will change the world. We will all be changed by the language of love. The covenant has come down through the generations. The love of God is never ending. We give thanks for God's faithfulness. Today, we light the candle of love. We give thanks for God's steadfast love. God has done great things for us. God's love is heralded in the promise of Christ. Holy is God's name. God's promises are fulfilled in the coming of Christ. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. God's salvation is offered in the gift of Christ. The love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Stay is
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in your call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self and material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace, knowing that even if you are alone, God's peace is with you always. Holy God, your prophet Micah foretold with faith that a new ruler would come forth from Bethlehem. Today we celebrate the fulfillment of your promise. Your daughter Elizabeth proclaimed with faith that her cousin was to be the mother of of her Lord. Today we celebrate the fulfillment of your promise. Your servant Mary proclaimed with faith that she would be called blessed by all generations. Today we celebrate the fulfillment of your promise. Make us bold enough to proclaim with faith the coming of your kingdom, the coming of your justice, the coming of your peace. May we sing out the good news of your salvation, trusting in fulfillment of your promises. All this we pray in the name of the one who comes. Amen. Hi, everyone. I hope that you had a good week, and I hope that you enjoy the break ahead, and I hope you get a chance to celebrate Christmas in some way even in spite of everything that's going on these days. Today we lit our last candle of Advent, the candle of love. 
And it's right that we did so because love has come. Love whom we name Jesus has come into the world. That love which is so powerful that it changed the world. It made us God's children forever. It claimed us. It sustains us. It renews us. It is what we experience when we have love between ourselves and a friend or a family member or somebody who might be more romantic or whatever the love is. We know God because we experience love in all these varieties of ways. So we celebrate that in the lighting of the candle and in the coming of Jesus. And that's big. It's a big way of saying it. But for me, I think it can be boiled down to a little bit, a a somewhat smaller statement. Not that love isn't big, it's huge. It is the most powerful force and it's the thing that can change the world for the better. It's the thing that we celebrate and hope for every moment of our lives. Love is that, that force, that, that, I don't know what else to call it, but a force really, in our lives that makes everything worth, worth it, worth living, worth doing. It's love. It's love that gives all of that life and purpose Love is that force. And again, that's another big statement. But let's put it a little smaller. When you were a child, I know when I was a child, there were moments when I was scared. We've all been scared. We're probably still scared to this day and about a lot of the different things. And probably some of us wish we could go back to when we were a child because when we were afraid back then, it was so easy just to go to our parents or whoever it might be that we trusted more than anyone else. And we could go to them and we could tell them that we were afraid. We didn't have to be ashamed of it. We could just tell them. And when we told them, they could make things better. They could wrap us up in a big hug. And they could maybe kiss us in the forehead. They could do a lot of different things. And by doing it, the fear would go away. We would know again how much we were treasured and loved. And things would be made right. So we can say love is this big, giant force that changes the world. And it's the thing that makes life worth living. But in its simplest forms, the simplest form, love is that great, wonderful hug from a loved one who makes life better, who brings balance back and peace back, and just, well, we all remember what it's like, right? To be hugged and told that everything's okay by someone we love and trust beyond words. Suddenly everything is right again. That's how I imagine God's love. Yes, it's this big, giant, universal force, but it's also something that simple this hug of a loved one, this voice telling us it's going to be okay because I will never leave you. I will make sure things are okay for you. I'll make sure you get through this. You don't have to be afraid. For me, it's the simplest and most profound image of God's love that I can can hold on to. Just this great hug from the God who is our creator, redeemer and sustainer, telling us, you are loved, I am loved, things will be okay because I will never leave you, ever. It's the love that we celebrate when we light the candle. It's the love that we celebrate when Jesus comes into the world. It is the love that gives our life purpose, hope, peace, and joy. And for that we say thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are love. You are that hug in the darkness when we are so frightened. You are the voice telling us things will be okay because you will never leave us. You are that deep comfort of peace, the one whom we can trust beyond all, 
the one who can give balance and peace and hope back to our life. May we hold on to that love all our days. May it give us strength and hope and peace even in difficult times. For your love is our life. And for that we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas ahead. Of course, there'll be Christmas Eve service if you're going to be watching online. There's Christmas Eve services here too. So if I don't see you or interact with you before in some way, have a wonderful and Merry Christmas. Bye for now. Let us pray. The Spirit and the Church cry out, Come, Lord Jesus. Everyone who awaits his appearance cries out, Come, Lord Jesus. The whole creation cries, Come, Lord Jesus. Come to us, Lord Jesus, as we hear Walter read your holy word. Keep us attentive to the truth of the scriptures. Turn us away from myths and turn us in faith to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, the first reading is from Micah chapter 5, verse 2 on. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is from Psalm 80. We will read it responsibly. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us a derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Our second reading is from the 10th chapter of Hebrews. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Holy Gospel today is taken from St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what, has, of what has, was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Christianity is a multifaceted and rich tapestry of practices and beliefs. As Lutherans, we have our liturgy, which is the dramatic reenactment of our salvation story. As one of my first, se first year seminary professors phrased it, it is our constant reminder and proclamation of the love that God has for us, shown so beautifully in the person of Jesus Christ. Our service is built on that fundamental truth of our faith. But other denominations have different ways of celebrating and honoring God in their midst. Some of our evangelical brothers and sisters sing music that is meant to elicit an emotional response in keeping with the message of love they are trying to convey through that music. Still others celebrate through the coming of the Holy Spirit in their lives, often in very real and tangible ways. One has to only think of the speaking in tongues that our Pentecostal brethren partake in, for an example. Although these are all ways that we are trying to worship God and give our love and thanks to the one who has meant so much to us, we can grow a little elitist about our brand of Christianity. We look at something like speaking in tongues and it makes us vaguely uncomfortable, or worse. We shake our heads and double down on the customs and traditions that make us comfortable. I once read an essay by a Swedish theologian, Christer Stendhal, in which he addressed the idea of speaking in tongues. Stendhal was a bishop of the Church of Sweden, so his thinking originated out of mainline church theology. In his essay on the speaking of tongues, he made the point that as Christians, we all speak in tongues. We might not realize it because of our narrow definition of that idea, but we do. For Stendhal, every time we speak in words of love, when our normal human inclination would be to speak words of hate, or when we speak truth to oppressive power, when our instinct would be to speak more placating words to those same power brokers, then we are speaking in tongues. In those moments, we are speaking through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are speaking beyond ourselves and beyond our abilities. We often do not even know where the words are coming from. I have experienced that more than once when I have prayed for someone especially someone facing a difficult moment in their life. I sometimes struggle with knowing what to say, but when I pray, when I invite God into that moment, the words come. Words which I firmly believe are often not my own. Stendhal believed that there were numerous examples of this throughout Scripture. One of those passages was our Gospel text for today. 
Mary was, by all accounts, a simple girl. She was not royalty or nobility of any kind. She was likely not educated. It would have been assumed that she would have lived out her life in relative, relative obscurity, if not for God's call in her life. And this young, uneducated girl is the one who speaks these words of thanksgiving and prophecy, often called the Magnificat. They are words of praise to God for what God is doing in Mary's life, but they are also words of promise and prophecy as Mary speaks about how justice will be done in the world. The exploitive powers of the world will be toppled. It will be God who will rule, and it will be God's justice that reigns. These are elegant words, but these are not the words that one would expect from the mouth of one with no education. And in essence, these aren't the words from such an individual. They are the words of the Holy Spirit, tripping from Mary's tongue, and she proclaims with great joy what God has done for her and for us. Today, we lit the last candle of our Advent season, the candle of love. It is a culmination of this season of waiting, for it is in love that we gain our joy, and it is in love that we can find peace, and it is in love that we ground our hope. It is love made flesh in the babe in Bethlehem that we wait to celebrate once again this Christmas. So how can we keep from proclaiming it just as Mary did? And just like Mary, the words that we speak, words of love, are not solely ours. They are the words of the Spirit, tripping from our tongues in words of praise and hope. We as Lutherans may not feel comfortable with the idea of speaking in tongues, but we do so every time our words are words of praise and love when so often we are frustrated and angry. In those moments, it is through the power of the Spirit that we are speaking. How could it be otherwise? I sometimes wonder if Mary felt the same or the disciples as they journeyed into the world to spread the gospel message. Did they too realize that it was through the power of the Spirit that they spoke and acted and shared God's love? When we look at traditions that are not our own in a somewhat different light, it becomes much harder to dismiss them as less Christian or worse yet, goofy and inappropriate. Because in the end, we as fellow believers are all attempting to do the same thing. We are attempting to give praise to God in all love and humility. We are trying to express our gratitude for all that God has done for us. It is only when those traditions become based more on hate and harm that we have to question their intentions. But I would like to believe that most Christians do not tend down that road. I believe that most of us, in our way, are trying to do the same thing. We are trying to speak words of love to our God and the world around us, and we are trying to sing our praise to God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Perhaps the way we do that has a Lutheran flavor like we gathered here are used to. Or maybe that has a more praise and worship feel. Or maybe that has more of a Pentecostal feel. In the end, we are doing what we can to speak words of love, however that comes to pass. And in this season of love, it is even easier to blend our voices and give voice to the one who has come and will come again, Jesus the Christ. Whether it is in the moment when the world sings Silent Night or Joy to the World, or when the story of Christ's birth is told once again, love will be spoken into the world. It may be spoken in English or French or Tamil or Mandarin. It may be signed in ASL or read silently from the pages of Scripture. It may be pronounced by great orators of the church or by a farmer from the lectern of their local parish. It may be spoken by someone for the first time or by someone who has been a Christian since their infancy. In the end, it doesn't matter. In that holy moment, celebrated in just a few short days, we will all be speaking in words of love, empowered by the Holy Spirit, just as Mary was, as the disciples were, and as we will continue to be. In that moment, we will, be, we will all be speaking in one single language, as on the day of Pentecost, we will be speaking in the language of God's love. Now may that love ever fall from our lips. Amen.
morning of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears from the dawn, draw the sleep, and the world is about to season of Advent, we have encountered hope, peace, and joy. Today, belief and love are the theme. Today, we'll, we have heard the story of, surpri- of surprising commitment. We, will, we have learned of Mary and God's wonderful love. Today, we will be challenged to believe in all that God can do. Open our hearts, Lord, that may we be ready for your love. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of waiting and watching, Let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for our every need. Use the church's gifts and ministries for your service, bringing your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, and melting ice caps. Make us servants of your creation that brings forth abundant life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to imbalances of power. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy Show your loving kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. 
comfort any struggling with infertility and those who await test results, are in treatment and hospice care, and others who are in need. Remember today Vanilla Anderson, Nita Holtz, Janet Plystead. We name before you too Teresa Armstrong and pray that you would be with her, O Lord, as she continues her treatment for cancer. We pray that you would give her relief and healing. And we pray too for her family as they offer care for her in this difficult time. Be with her, O Lord, and all for whom who know her. Keep them in your love and your care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and community. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those like Mary who, who were courageous in their witness. Give us courage Give us such courage until that day when you fulfill all things. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. God in community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We delight in your love and salvation, Lord. There can be no greater gifts than these. We will gladly serve you in holiness and righteousness. We offer ourselves. We offer all that you have provided us. May it be used to bring your light to those who dwell in darkness. Prepare us and complete us, Lord. Amen. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you in the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Set everybody free. Be broken.
Receive the blessing. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. I'd like to thank those who are involved with our worship. Lois for her playing, Walter for reading, Brenda for prepping the bulletin. Big thank you as always to each of you. Also note our Christmas Eve's Christmas Eve services are coming up this coming week, 5 and 7.30. Both services will be the same in terms of their content. Uh, 5 o'clock, yeah, we're asking you to register, please, for both, or, well, not both services. I don't imagine you're coming to both, but register for either of the services, whichever one you hope to come to. As of the filming of this service, the five o'clock was getting to be quite full. Uh, our capacity will only allow us so many, so we're going to have to cap it soon. It may be that by the time you watch this, we've already had to do that. Um, if you haven't registered and really want to come, don't feel like you've missed out on something just because uh, you can't get to the 5 o'clock. The 7.30 will be the same. Uh, it will be the exact same service. And so there's, it'll be the same content, everything. So if you can't make it to the 5, try and make it to the 7.30 if you want to come because it'll be, it'll be just the same and an opportunity to still have a Christmas Eve service in person if that's something you wish for. Other than that, um, yeah, hopefully this coming week we will also put out a Christmas hymn sing, something you can use not just for Christmas Eve or the few days beforehand, but also throughout the Christmas season. Pop it on, sing along. That's the hope. And uh, we will, of course, have Sunday worship next Sunday for the 26th of December, first Sunday at Christmas. It'll be a service of Holy Communion in person, and of course we'll provide the online as well. So that's kind of how our next week or so is going to go. Hopefully you have a merry and wonderful Christmas. For those of you I won't see in person, I hope that it's a blessed time for you. And however you are able to celebrate it, I hope you know God's love and presence as you do so. So take care. Blessings of the season be with you, and we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.
Go in peace, Christ is near. Thanks be to God.